What's good team? Welcome to today's video where we're going to be discussing coding projects and more specifically the three projects that you should make that will stand out to employers that can also be made in approximately a week each. It's super simple to get them up and running and inside of your portfolio. Not all projects are created equal. Some you can spend infinite amount of time only to have them overlooked by employers. So that is a big oopsie that we want to avoid. And also throughout this video, we'll come to understand what makes projects stand out. Then when we have the criteria down we'll understand what we should actually build them with then we'll talk about the literal projects I recommend you should make how to make them extremely quickly there's some secret tips there and then at the end we'll cover two extra steps you should take to make your projects really stand out amongst the rest there's millions out there but we will make yours pop as always if you enjoy the video smash the like and subscribe buttons love that support and with that said let's get started so before we dive into the actual projects, the first thing we need to do is understand what makes projects stand out to an employer. Now, if you're a coding cool cat, you'll probably have your projects in a portfolio and you have some links to the live deployed code and probably a link to the GitHub repository. Now, this is the critical part. Employers are going to want to see your code. They're going to go to your GitHub. And this is where the first thing you have to understand about your projects is that the code needs to be tidy. It's super critical that you don't get 80% of the way through a project and then at the end you're so out of your brains bored with it that you just start uploading random code that may still get the job done but looks atrocious no one ever wants to look at it. This is going to be a huge red flag to employers so it's really important that we keep the code at a high clean level. Your code is very modular, it's functional, it's split up into its independent use cases and this leads us into the second thing we have to understand is that you need to document your code. It's super critical that when someone comes to look at your code, they can understand exactly what it does. Complex functions are commented, all that good stuff. Now this one is particularly important because it simulates the coding environment you would expect to see inside of a company or corporation. Typically when you're working alongside other engineers, you'll be modifying or updating code written by other people. And if your code isn't commented or clear, it's just really hard for anyone to make heads or tails of it. So make sure your code is tidy and commented. I'd also recommend having a github readme.md. This has a project summary. It might have a description of the problem you're trying to solve, the key steps you take to solve the problem, the reasons you made particular decisions and a summary or something nice, just to show that you can do some technical writing as well. Now to make those first two steps even easier to achieve, it's important to understand that complexity does not equal better or more impressive. Typically the best project is actually the simplest project you can find that demonstrates the skill set you are looking to display. For example, if I wanted to show that I could build a CRUD application, create, read, update, and delete, I probably shouldn't go and build Facebook. That's a waste of everybody's time. The code is super hard to review. Instead, I'd probably be better to have a to-do application that demonstrates the fundamental functionalities of a CRUD app and the code is pretty easy to write. Everything is super clean. It's not a thousand million lines of code so that it becomes complex and cluttered and it's just super clean and tidy and really easy to document. So keep that in mind when picking your projects, complex isn't necessarily better. After that you have to have it deployed. Employers love to see deployment. People think that as soon as their code is finished on their local development system that their project is done. That's not how the real world works and companies finding clever deployment solutions is part of your job as well and it's great to demonstrate with your projects. If you can send them a live link that is brownie points for you. And finally, the last thing that employers love is independent thought. Solve a problem that's personal to you or put your spin on something. I'd highly recommend that. It just is a great way to show your personality and you're probably going to be able to speak more enthusiastically about your project should you relate to the issue it tries to solve. So now that we understand the criteria for what makes a good project, the next thing we have to think about is what we actually want to build it with. Now this is also a super critical part of the process. And unfortunately it's not just as easy as picking the technology that you like to work with the most. If your goal is employment, we need to be strategic about the fact that we have three projects I recommend to demonstrate your capabilities and gain credibility to land your job. So the process I use to pick my technology is I go to LinkedIn, I look through 10 or 15 job postings for jobs that I would love to have, my dream job, and I look at the job requirements. Typically the jobs will post the technology that they are recruiting for. And at the end of it, you'll have a list. You'll probably have duplicates for some of the jobs, like a lot of jobs have React and Node. 
And once you simmer that whole process down, you'll have a nice list of skills and talents that you need to show that you are capable of. The technology I personally recommend having done my own research is React or Next.js, Tailwind CSS, Node.js and Express. And for databases, typically either a SQL database like Postgres or Firebase for authentication and database projects is pretty cool. And I like using Render and Netlify for my hosting, but there are a million ways you can do that. But just really figuring out the tech stack that resonates for you. If you're looking to get into finance, that might be C or whatever it is. But yeah, it's just super critical to be strategic about the technology that you are using for your projects. Make sure that it matches with your dream job so that when they ask if you can do X and Y, you can be like, I literally did have a look at this cool project I built. And so now that we understand the criteria for what makes a good project, we know what technology we need to build it. What projects should we actually do? Well, my recommendation, especially for full stack web development, any kind of job in that particular area, I would recommend the combination of the following. First off, I would have a front end project that consumes an API. That's pretty much every front end developer's job on the face of the planet, making a front end user interface that consumes some kind of back end data from an API endpoint. Once again, it doesn't have to be complicated. There's loads of cool APIs out there. You could use the Lord of the Rings one and display a whole lot of Lord of the Rings information, Pokemon, jokes, whatever your interest might be. And counterpart to that, I reckon the second project that is great to do is a backend API CRUD endpoint. Most backends are typically created to handle CRUD operations using like a REST methodology, for example. And if you really wanted to add a cool spin on that, I try monetizing it so that people can make network requests to your API. It charges them, it, they get an API key, all that cool stuff. Also an extremely common system that is designed and used within a countless big tech corporations. Super impressive skill set to have. Even better if you can figure out Stripe in that process. Once again, great skill to have, super impressive to employers. And the third one that I would recommend is the combination of the first two. You've practiced building a front end project standalone. You practice building a back end API standalone. And then finally make some kind of simple full stack project with the two combined. The difference in this one is that I'd recommend chucking in an authentication system and trying a different database. In the API example, you don't even have to have a database necessarily. It could just be like a JSON little data storage, or perhaps you're just serving information. Whereas in the full stack one, if you could make like a to-do planner, or in my particular case, I made a gym application that, you know, tracks people's stats and has different workouts and stuff like that and they log into, they have a different account and they can access it on numerous different devices. Technically, you could combine all these projects into one, but I think that we violate the complexity rule doing that. So splitting them up into three different projects means that each one can be kind of unique, display still a different skill set with uh, unique applications of each technology, and the code base is just way less likely to get out of control, and each one can be independently neater, and you know they can complement one another. If you're short for ideas on projects, then I'd recommend checking out this repository. We've got some links to projects down below, in addition to summarizing all of the information here in the video. So the question becomes now, how do we go about building them quickly and efficaciously? If you're kind of new to programming and you're looking to get your first job, or even if you're more experienced and you just really want to bang these out in the spare time that you have, I would not recommend coding them from scratch. Since we've identified the project we want to build and we know what technology we want to build it with, we can super hyper accelerate this development process by instead just following a tutorial that uses the technology in an analogous uh, implementation. For example, most CRUD applications can be broken down into the same core logic set. Or for example, a full stack application may just have like an authentication system and a CRUD database interaction system. And you can just completely skin the whole application, gut it of everything useless. And once you've gone through that tutorial, keep all the core logic and just rebrand it. You'll have code examples on how to do just about every implementation you could want to do in your new application. And by the end, it will not resemble any tutorial. It's a totally unique project that you can take full ownership for, but you know, you will have just accelerated the process because you lay the foundations in the tutorial. It's not that long. It's pretty straightforward. You've got someone to kind of walk you through it. 
and then you just make a whole lot of adaptations so that it looks different it has a different purpose or functionality that no one will be able to trace back to the original tutorial that's how i started off with all my first projects and now even with uh, my new projects, they're typically based off some previous coding that I have done before. Now, finally, we can discuss the last two tips that will really just make your projects go the extra mile stand out and employers will be clawing at your feet to get you to work for their company. Even if you're learning to code, it's a great step to incorporate because it'll just make you that much more of a complete developer. Number one is to build a landing page for every application that you develop. Summarize the pain point, the solution, and even try market it to a target user, for example. If you can pull that kind of messaging together and put it in a nice user interface that really just mimics the intention of most tech companies around and it shows a lot of initiative that you're ready to really take a project from cradle to grave and do it justice. I'd highly recommend it. Often it can even be done first and it will just help you consolidate the purpose and intent of your project and how you want to solve the problem that you're trying to solve. And the second tip, the last piece of advice I'd recommend is to share it online. The visibility goes a long way. Often you might even get someone reaching out to you being like, I really like your work. An example is I post videos on YouTube and I had someone reach out to me because they saw I'd done a video on a particular tech stack and want me to work for them. It's that simple. The visibility is great. If you do do a project, I'd recommend even tagging me and I can take a look. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Post it on LinkedIn, Twitter. They're pretty common tech platforms, but you know, Discord, Slack, whatever works for you is absolutely brilliant. And that is pretty much it, my friends. Everything you need to know about projects, including the three projects I would recommend you build. If you want even more specificity in terms of what they should look like, I'd recommend checking out this page just here and the recommendations made in the project section. You could even follow the links to get started today. The examples there you can whip up within a week and you can be job ready within the month. Everything up and live in a portfolio. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Small James Web Development Roadmap. Link is in the description down below or dive straight in with these videos.